Good morning, faith family and friends. Today's gospel reading will be coming out of Luke chapter 1, verses 39 through 55. And I will be reading to you from the New King James Version. And the word of God reads, Now Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste to a city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. By, but why is this granted to me? that the mother of my Lord should come to me. For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior, for he has regarded the lowly state of his maid servant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imaginations of their heart. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. This is the word of God for the people of God, so thanks be to God. Let us pray. Most gracious and holy Father, we just want to thank you for another opportunity to serve you in spirit and in truth. Father, anything that is none like you, we ask that you remove it in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable because you are truly our strength, you are truly our redeemer, you are truly our savior. And we ask this in your name, the name of Jesus Christ and the church of God said, amen. Church family, the title of today's message is a savior is coming. As we prepare and continue through the Advent season, we continue to watch and wait with great anticipation the birth of a savior, a king. He's a redeemer, he's a healer, he's a deliverer of physical and mental captivity and bondage. For the one who brings to each one of us the gifts of hope, peace, joy, and love. The one that was born of a virgin came to give us life so that all can be saved. Through his mercy and his amazing grace, he gave of himself and he emptied himself. I hope we empty ourselves and draw closer to the source as we reflect and remember in celebration the birth of the one who came to save the world. As we gather with our families and tell stories and pass down the family history and traditions, my hope is that we will laugh and share things with one another and reflect on life's journey the changes we've made, the growth we've experienced, and understanding on how to live and navigate our way forward. 
as we seek wholeness and righteousness. Holding on to and sharing with other the gifts of hope, peace, joy, and love, which is the true meaning of this season. We are blessed. We are blessed to be a blessing as we spend time with each other and the ones we love and remember those that our hearts hold dear. These moments and experience in time are precious and heartfelt and kept alive through our memories and reflections that the Advent season brings to our remembrance as we watch and wait for the birth of a savior. Mary and Elizabeth's relationship is an example of this type of blessing. For when Mary greeted Elizabeth and was moved by the Holy Spirit, Elizabeth's response to her was, blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Because of Mary's belief and obedience to God, her blessing within her grows out of her in obedience. I can only imagine the full impact of this moment for the lives of both of these women were changed as they were embracing the task of doing their part in obedience and reverence for the building of God's kingdom. Knowing that God has a plan for each of their children to fulfill and that they will be instrumental to the faith that brings honor to God and to their mothers. Everything about these two mothers' pregnancies and births were special and blessed. And the gospel according to Luke chapter 1 began with two separate but parallel birth announcements. For the angel Gabriel came to Zacharias and said, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. Of course, Zacharias spoke to the angel and said, how shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is well advanced in years. And the angel answered and said to him, I'm Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God, and was sent to speak to you and bring you these glad tidings, glad tidings of joy. Since Zacharias questioned Gabriel, he became mute and not able to speak until the day these things took place. Because you did not believe the angel's words, which will be fulfilled in their own time, Zacharias remained mute until the eighth day after John's birth, when the people came to witness the circumcision of the child. They were trying to name the male child after his father, First, his mother shared with him that his name will be John. Then Zacharias wrote on the writing tablet he was using to communicate since his temple experience with the angel Gabriel. On the tablet, Zacharias wrote, his name is John. Immediately his mouth opened and his tongue was loosed and he spoke praising God. It was at that point Zacharias got his voice back. See, it's amazing what happens when we are obedient to the will of God. There was the first announcement about the birth of a son. Then further in the same chapter of Luke, Mary had her encounter with the angel Gabriel. When Mary was approached, the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. 
he will be great and will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord of God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. The angel Gabriel shared with Mary as she questioned how she would be with child since she was betrothed to a man, but was yet a virgin. Gabriel informed her and said, Mary, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you, that the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. The angel continued talking to Mary and shared with her that Elizabeth also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her, who was called barren. See, God can do anything that he says that he would do. He can make anything that seems impossible, possible if you have faith and if you believe. You see, God prepared both of these women because the task ahead of them was to be a vessel through which the blessings from the Most High God would come to pass and fulfill the scriptures with the birth of these two sons, John the Baptist and Jesus, the Son of God. They would be born and eventually grow up into men and carry forth the living word of God through their teaching, preaching, and their lifestyle. For with God, nothing will be impossible because with God, all things are possible. Now, after the two separate birth announcements were revealed, the story merges. When Mary went into the hill country with haste to the city, of Judah. These two women, Mary and Elizabeth, were related for they were cousins. They were blessed women of God whose lives and the birth of their sons changed the world as we know it. One who would prepare a way for the one who would do great things, John the Baptist, who lived in the wilderness, preached and baptized for all to repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. He preached to the people to have a mindset change of repentance and to be baptized for their remissions of sins. Then there's one who would reconcile himself, sacrifice himself for others, and show mercy to those who reverenced and feared him from generation. To generation is the one whose birth we are watching and waiting for during this Advent season. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Jesus Christ, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty, the Everlasting Father, who reigns, who rules and never changes. Hallelujah. God sent his son to save us because the power of sin exceeds our human strength. Therefore, we are incapable of managing sin on our own. So we must repent and call on the name of Jesus to intercede on our behalf as the Lamb of God who shed his blood and formed a new covenant for you and for many. Now, after Mary arrived at her cousin's home and they met each other, they were overjoyed to see one another as one would expect at such a homecoming. But when something happened, the baby in Elizabeth's womb leaped and she was filled with the Holy Spirit. Even though Elizabeth was Mary's senior, she was moved because Mary was the mother to be 
of our Lord. And she came to her home to spend time with her, and the fruit of their wombs are blessed as they prepared to become mothers. For they are blessed to be a blessing because of their willingness to serve and be obedient and believe in the Holy Spirit and was open to receive and acknowledge with reverence and honor. In spite of what they had to go through to bring these children into the world. Blessed are you among women to carry and give birth to a child, to nurture that child, to grow them and give them back to God to carry out his plan. We should be thankful for their obedience because this blessing from God flows from generation to generation. Just like the word of God said in the song of Mary, the first thing Mary said is that her soul magnifies the Lord and her spirit rejoices in God our Savior. You see, holy is his name. His mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He shows strength and might with his arm. God chose a humble handmaiden to carry his only begotten son into this world. These two women magnified the Lord by exercising their faith and trusting in God through whatever was ahead of them, for they are blessed. And we too must trust in God for whatever comes before us because he is with us always. They are blessed to be a blessing and they take their work for the kingdom with high regard to bring forth their sons. For the older of the two, John, came to prepare a way for the other greater than he. And you see, he didn't have a problem with that. Because God is bigger than all of us. We all are instrumental in his plan. And if we're going to move it forward, we have to come together in unity so that God would get the glory from the work we are doing. One who was divine, Jesus, who came and put on flesh and dwelt among us, was born the king of kings but lied in a lonely manger for all. Surrounded by animals and his mother, Mary, and his father, Joseph. He came to save us. He had to go to the lowest point one could go to be there for all. Because when Jesus Christ says he paid it all for all, he meant it. The ones that know him and the ones that don't. The ones that are incapable of love, he wants to get to change them and change their hearts so that they can become a part of the kingdom. Church family, we all are going through so many things as individuals, as families, as a community, as a country, and globally. But God sits on the throne. He sits high, he sees low, and he knows everything about us. We too are born with a purpose, a ministry, a praise, and worship. There is a great work within each one of us but we have to allow the Holy Spirit to come into our lives to work in us and through us. We too are called to live a life worthy of the gospel. 
we too have a great work within us to bring forth into the world for the building of God's kingdom and his people, those that are capable of love and those that don't know love. He wants all. And this is an opportunity during this season to share the gifts of Advent, of hope, peace, joy, and love. This love is unconditional. It is not bound to a person doing anything but opening up their hearts to their creator. For we will reflect and remember this Advent season, preparing for the coming of a savior. Let us remember the hearts and actions of Mary and Elizabeth, for they believed and put their faith in action with love for their God and each other. As believers, we are called into ministry and to put our faith into practice and apply the living word of God into our lives and the way that we live. A savior is coming. So let us prepare and stay ready to receive this precious gift who brings us hope, who brings us peace, who brings us joy and love and allow the Holy Spirit to come and move within our lives to bless others and give glory to the God of our salvation. This should bring us comfort in knowing Jesus Christ will save us. If you just allow him to come into your life, he will transform you. He will grow you so that you will be more like him in his nature. For we too are created to love through our faith in action. This deepens our love, this strengthens our belief, and then we are in obedience to the word and the will of God. The kingdom living is now. We can experience this now but we just have to acknowledge Jesus Christ as the savior that he is. A babe that was born in a lowly manger came to save the world. One soul came to save the world. A savior is coming for you and for me. So prepare while you can and be ready to receive the power and wonder of his love towards us all. A savior is coming. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Church family, as the word of God goes forth, there is always a response. So let us pray. Father God, we just want to thank you for allowing us to worship you in spirit and in truth. Thank you for showing us that we are blessed to be a blessing. Thank you for touching the hearts of these women that were, loved you and were obedient to your word and your will to do what you charged them to do so that it would affect one generation to the next generation. And it will, this blessing will have no end. We ask that you keep us, protect us, and help us to enjoy the true gifts of Advent, of hope, peace, joy, and love. We thank you for our Savior. We thank you for our families. We thank you for allowing us to come together back home to be with one another. So let us experience you as we come in unity to celebrate the coming of a savior. 
We ask it all in Jesus Christ's name. And the Church of God said, Amen. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to connect with me on social media, Pastor Johnny Simpson Jr. on Facebook, at Pastor J. Simpson Jr. on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks again for watching, and God bless.